I was reading online and it seems like the number I got was about 200,000 cases per year of celiac disease specifically. Um, gluten intolerance, I don't really know per se how many individuals a year experience that. The difference is that with celiac disease you have to go and be, there's some blood work that has to be done as well as sometimes they go into a, a GI and take a look at you just to see if you have celiac disease. Whereas gluten intolerance or gluten sensitivity, sometimes people just kind of, you know, they eat food and then they notice, oh, every time that I eat bread or every time I go and have pasta or lasagna or something, I just don't feel that good. So I feel like I'm gluten intolerant. So there is, there is kind of a, a differentiating line where if you're celiac, it's more of a, you have to go to a doctor to get it tested. And if you're gluten intolerant, then you don't. But a lot of the symptoms for, for some people are the same between, between both of them. Um, so the scarring of the intestines and stuff is pretty limited to celiac disease um, from what I've, what I've learned and what I've gathered. Um, gluten intolerance is more just kind of, I don't feel good or I get sick when I eat gluten and doesn't really, to my knowledge, doesn't affect some of the more severe symptoms of celiac disease. And so, and, and sometimes people with gluten intolerance, it's really hard because there are a lot of people who just want to go on the gluten-free diet and so they say they're gluten intolerant, when in reality they can eat gluten probably all day and be fine. And so, once again, it goes back to the spectrum idea and on level of severity and seriousness, celiac disease is probably at the higher end of the spectrum, going down to people who just want to join the gluten-free fad diet and are gluten intolerant, and they're probably on the lower severity. But there are people that go everywhere in, in the spectrum. So you just really have to f listen to your body, figure out what it needs, and then be cautious and careful with what you eat from there. And sometimes I feel like that's my, what happens with gl gluten intolerance, is someone just eats gluten all the time. And you know, it doesn't have to be they are always eating, you know, like French bread or something. Maybe they have toast for breakfast, big sandwich for lunch, and then like chicken pot pie or something for dinner. And they have just gluten all the time, and their system kind of is like, whoa, I'm overloaded on gluten, like, I'm going to tell you and let you know by being angry at you. And so it does, and then you're like, oh my goodness, I'm gluten intolerant, I have this horrible disease, like my life has changed. It's like, no, 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 just switch it up, you know. Eat some rice noodles, they're very good. Um, eat some meat, very good for you as well. Eat, like, learn something from the rabbits, you know. Eat the leafy vegetables. Have a well-balanced diet and you'll be okay.